fantastic. She was a very, very sweet person. Um, like, when she started uh, getting really famous and all these things started happening for her, I was so happy for her because she was, like, she's just as delicate as what she looks, you know? She's very delicate, very sweet. Um, she doesn't have a mean bone in her body. Like, she's just really, really nice. And um, the other thing I'm super proud of with her is that she was the first Hollywood star to actually, when she became so famous, to go to Africa, to go to places that were in need, to get involved with the UN, you know? Like, I never understood why, yeah, nobody ever did that. Like, the only celebrities that would ever do that were people that were retired. Like, literally, the other person that you saw going to Africa and going to these countries was Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey Hepburn was in her 70s and 80s. You know, and so Angelina was the first star to actually take initiative while she was, you know, famous. And I love that because I always thought that's what I would do, you know. Um, and, you know, maybe the, our paths crossing for a little time, like, maybe had her thinking about things or whatever, but... I'm really grateful that she remembers everybody and that she's always tried to make the world a better place. And she made an example. Now, you know, now people are uh, getting involved with charity and, and helping other places in need. So that's Angelina. Wake up. Time for school. Deja vu. Ray Sanchez, you're under arrest under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was so much fun. Again, um, you know, the writer, I don't know if people, a lot of people know this, but the person who wrote Hackers is Cuban. And um, so, yeah, and I think that's why he included a lead Latino character in his script because normally, again, you don't see a lot of uh, protagonists uh, that are uh, Latino in films. And um, that was really wonderful of him. Again, you know, the role that I had was not the lead, right? It was one of the supporting roles, but it was innovative for that time because, again, um, yeah, because it was something new. And so I'm really happy that it happened for him. I'm sure he was hoping, you know, you start, everything starts on the page with no promise that it's going to go, you know. So thank God for him that he got to see his dream come true. Um, every day was a um, beautiful time like just because you know you in that situation you you are always in such gratitude knowing that you're making a movie and that this is a big opportunity and everything so everything was amazing i mean imagine um also my friendship with mark anthony started on that movie and that was also a beautiful thing because yes because as a puerto rican there were two puerto ricans in england doing a movie and that was something that we were both so excited about and we're very felt like we were uh breaking you know, boundaries, and, and that is always going to be a special part. And then the other biggest part, I guess, that I really remember was just going to England, and because we filmed it in, in England, in London, and um, that was an amazing experience. So just get, getting that opportunity to go over there. No, not at all. So that was another thing. I mean... Yeah, you know, and learning, we had to learn, of course, back then it wasn't as common to have a laptop or do all those other things. So, um, yes, so they gave us some training in um, working with laptops, how to sign in, simple things, how to sign out, how to go on the Internet, like little cute things like that. But um, and then we also did two weeks of training with uh, rollerblades. Um, so that was also a little training they gave us. Um, yeah, and then that was it. And then we were off and, and, and you know, filming the, the project. Um, well, there are a few similarities. I mean, one is the, the fashion. Uh, we both are into clothes. And so that was really fun because um, 
when I got the film and then we, we you know, when you do the costume um, fittings and stuff like that with the designers, it was like, oh, wow, I've always wanted to do a movie where there was like really cool fashion. That was actually like a dream of mine. So that was um, a dream come true. And um, and then the, I guess the uh, sense of humor and the wit, the, the way that... Um, you know, the Phantom Freak, and I guess that was also what I helped maybe helped come across that I did in playing in the audition maybe was the way that I could handle his smart Alec, you know, saying things like, you know, what are you doing, you know, what are you waiting for, arrest me already, and, you know, and it's in the place where I put that thing that time, you know, all of that kind of stuff lives in me too, you know, so that was um the similarity between us there, you know. He was um, the most down-to-earth, really chummy kind of guy. It was almost, it made me nervous because, um, and he's the only person I um, that I worked with that maybe I was a little starstruck with because, um, my goodness, he's Rocky. You know what I mean? Like, that was bizarre. That was bizarre for me. It was very surreal because, I mean, he is Rocky. I mean, that was really crazy. I mean, the first day he came on the set, when we all... Um, did our first day of shooting and um all of us were there first because i think there was like nine of us in the lead uh you know the group that is goes through the whole thing of trying to get out of there and um and then he it was brought on set to meet each one of us and shake our hand and stuff and um when he walked on to the set we they had built a fake tunnel um in italy uh, to be like the Holland Tunnel. And the tunnel they built was pretty expensive. It was 10 New York blocks long, um, which, you know, the real tunnel, like, yeah, yeah. So it's like 10 miles, I mean, now two miles, I think, in real life, but still 10 blocks for the set was pretty interesting. And um, so he comes down that tunnel, you know, like, and he's, like, talking all, like, you know, with, with the two guys, and he's, like, really very energetic, Um and so that was kind of crazy. But it was, oh, you know. But the thing is, honestly, I don't talk to people. Um, I think he probably found me a little bit quiet because um, he talks more than me when, when we're working and stuff. But um, I am more, like, in between each shot, I'm super quiet. I just, I don't try to be. I just am. I come from a martial arts background, actually, as a little boy. So I, yes, um, kung fu. So I, um, yeah. Sorry? You too? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so, you know, um, I don't show off and I don't um, play around on a set. I am more like, because maybe it's my martial arts background, I'm very quiet and respectful and calm. And then when it's time to go, it's time to go, you know? Um, so I was always very, very quiet. Um, I remember Stallone actually saying, and we call him Sly, like he likes to beat, that's his name, one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And I remember when we did a take once and he did say um, to the group and just to like kind of me in general, he was like, yeah, that one, he's very quiet, but when it's time to go, it's like, because then you see my work, in my yeah, because I am very energetic as you see in my film work and in my real life I'm, I'm bouncing off the walls but again like yeah I like to be very um I, and I also feel I'm representing Puerto Ricanos and Latinos in general and I don't want to be like that person that's like you know um playing around you know what I mean so yeah um that was an amazing opportunity and experience that um I, it was just amazing. I mean, I had just finished doing The Cape Man, actually, on Broadway with Mark Anthony. And then this film came along. Um, I was actually supposed to do another film that ended up getting canceled. And I was in California already. And all of a sudden, the call came in about this other film. And um, I met the director. And it was like one, two, and three, very fast. Uh, I met the director within a day, and then he offered me the part right after reading it. Um, I mean, right, you know, the audition and stuff. And um, it was just such a funny script. Like, it was like comedy from page one. And it was like the funniest, like, 
LGBTQ humor and banter. And I mean, one of the lines, excuse my French, like that I say in the movies is everybody who's anybody sucks dick. I mean, hilarious. I mean, you know what I mean? There were some very, every line, you know what I mean? was just like so funny that it was like, you know, a, a, an amazing time. And, um, you know, and there were like, uh, it was, it was really the first quote unquote gay black Film. Before then, there had been some gay films that were centered around um, Caucasian characters. And um, so Punks was funded and, and, and uh, uh, produced by Babyface, um, the singer. And that was because the writer of the film and the director was Babyface's assistant. At the time, him and his wife, Tracy Edmonds, who was an entertainment lawyer and is also a TV correspondent, um, had their entertainment company, Edmonds Entertainment, and they wanted to make movies, and they wanted to, you know, and they did. They did some movies and TV shows, and so there, uh, it was a blessing for their assistant, who was gay, who is still a, a gay writer and director. Um, yeah, that they, you know, he was their vice president, and they had a lot of respect for his writing and his talent and everything he did for his company, and they had no discrimination, and it was just as easy as, um, he tells the story as him just saying, oh, you know, I have a movie script, and they were like, "Let's read it." And they and he gave it to them, and they were like, "We love it. Let's do it." You know, and that's how that happened. You know, so that's like a big miracle for the LGBTQ community that um, they did not care about um, any kind of discrimination. They valued and understood and knew that there's tons of gay people and that their gay story is in front of them every day in Los Angeles with the makeup artists and the hair designers and the kids outside and everybody in their own families. And so that's how they treated it. And then that's how that movie got made. Um, on for yeah, it is a it is a film that's very hard to find because it's a independent film and then there happened to be some kind of legal issues with um with the writer and and some friends that he went to school with that were you know I guess uh, uh, said that maybe too much of their personal life was in the movie I don't you know know those details but that's why it's hard to find yeah.